Time to figure out exactly what to do with this mess of a wire harness. It's got a lot of splices on it, things I'm not too proud of. Some of the stuff was done when I was 16, 17 years old. I've just never changed it because it keeps working. See all the connections and stuff here. Um, I've unwrapped everything. Uh, see if I can explain what I got here. So this went to the old alternator, which was a two-wire alternator. Okay, that's the plug for it. And then this is uh, to the battery, essentially. This little guy here is a solenoid that I added a long time ago when I put HEI ignition on the small block. HEI ignition needs to have a full 12 volts. And if you just run a coil wire to it from an old distributor, it's really not 12 volts and it doesn't work well. So what I did years ago was I added the solenoid. So this here is actually the wire that went to the old non-HEI distributor. I run it up through the solenoid and I use that, and that's hooked to the key, and I use that to basically turn it on and off a full 12 volts. I got the full 12 volts by hooking a wire up to the starter. These two, the green is for temperature and the blue is for oil um, for the sending unit. These go to the gauges that are in the dash, which I don't use anymore. So I will just wind these up and tie them back. And this green wire here is to the autometer gauge. On this side, the green wire is for the oil sending unit, which is right there behind the headers. And the brown is the tack lead, and that will go to that tack module um, eventually when I get that hooked up. I took the header off on the passenger side so it'd be easier to hook up the wires to the starter. And what uh, the big wires go go there, and the little wire goes onto this um, terminal. And then I'm going to put a, um, a wire holder back here. I slid this um, heat protective tube onto the onto the wire that goes to the starter. This is the stuff here. Um, just bought it from Jegs that heat protective sleeve on. I did the same thing with the battery cable. Um, again, the header comes down here, it's pretty close. I just want to make sure that there's not any problems. So those are the two wires. This is the battery cable and I ran it under the motor mount. I'm going to wire tie that up to the motor mount and then the lead from the wire harness comes down here. I have a, if you can see it, there's a, there's a clip in the back here. For the temperature sending unit wire, um, I just put that um, like a corrugated wire loom cover and the wire exit here. Um, I'm putting new end on and I'm not using the like standard ones with the crimp plastic. I'm actually using ones without the plastic and then I'm going to put some shrink on it. The shrink tube on it, I mean it just looks so much nicer than that. So we'll take that and it'll go right on here. The, uh, the shrink wrap was nice to cover up that connection um, that's soldered there. And then I still have to put an end on this, but I will have to trim this back uh, to go back to the solenoid um, up here. Um, but uh, you got to wait to see where I'm going to end up with strapping this thing down so I know what length. Here's what I ended up doing. Um, this is that wire harness that was hanging out over here uh, with the old dash sending unit wires for the temp and oil pressure. Um, I basically just kind of wound it back on itself, went back to this clip and wound everything up and cable tied it back here. I think once I get the fuel rails on here and everything, I don't even think you'll see it. And I have all the integrity of the wire harness still there. So here is, this was the last wire that I cleaned up. Um, that'll go back on here. Now I know how we're to cut it. Uh, a connector on it and this is the feed wire for the um, for the computer that goes through the, the relay so I'm gonna then shorten this up also it's way too long and uh, should look all nice and clean that cleaned up pretty nice uh, the trigger wire for the solenoid is the black wire here uh, the only wire I got left to mess with is this one here but again once I put the computer up here then I'll get this one set up and of course don't forget your ground strap. On this side, really the only thing I uh, gotta worry about is the uh, oil sending unit. Um, this is the wire here coming out of the dash. Um, I put an end on it just like I did for the um, for the water. So now I'm just going to um, wind it around down here and get it attached. 
that came out relatively neat. Uh, you see the blue wire. I basically run it through one of the open holes in the bell housing and up and then over and into the firewall. These are for the alternator, um, which is a set of wires that's been modified probably half a dozen times. Some by me, some by his previous owner. Um, the alternator for the small block Chevy was on the passenger side. Um, this one's on the driver's side, so we need to get the wires over here. And plus it's a totally different kind of alternator than what was on here before. In 68, they used an externally regulated alternator. Uh, that's the external regulator there. Uh, the new regulators are internal regulated and have been since, I don't know, the mid-70s, something like that. Um, obviously, my wiring is all set for the external. Um, that mess there uh, was um, to convert it to one of the mid-70s style um, regulated alternators. You can't just get rid of all that because... Um, like the dash light won't work for the for the charging light, which I'd like to have working, and maybe some other things I don't know about. So there's got to be a way to convert from the old style, which was called a 10DN type external regulated alternator, to this style that I have here, which is a CS130D type of alternator. And the 130D has that oval four pin connector on it. After much searching and many phone calls, I kind of came up with this modified sketch or drawing here that shows how to wire this thing up. This is the plug. It's off the external regulator. So basically you need the jumper, two of the terminals, and then you have to come up with a connection for the alternator that will go from that plug and then also have a pigtail that goes to the uh, charging post. The four pin oval uh, connector looks like this. There are um, four pins labeled P, L, F, and S. The ones we need are L, which is the one that will go from the dash, and the other one we need is S, which is, uh, I think it stands for sense, and that goes to the, to the charging post. So I'm going to make up a pigtail to do that. I bought this pigtail from Wiring Specialties online. Uh, it was eight bucks. I went to the junkyard to try to get one of these and I could only find single wire and a two wire, but not the second wire from the post that I, that I need for that drawing. Uh, the jumper needs to go from the end of the regulator connector to the third post over and see that little, um, little one-way tab thing so you know which side uh, to do it from from the regulator. Here's a jumper wire that I made. There's my jumper wire in the regulator connector. Is that third connector over, that wire is what goes and connects to the L on the alternator. On my regulator connector, that third terminal over is the black wire. It's next to the blue. Here's the old connector to the alternator. You can see the blue and the black wire. Traces back through this mess of connections, and here's the blue and the black. So what I'm going to do is terminate the, the blue and then put a new wire onto the black. The other wire we need is the main charging cable. This mess right here is it, so I'm going to cut this off and splice in, obviously, one complete piece of wire. I routed the wires for the alternator, um, brought them up on the inside of those brackets for the fuel rails. I uh, just have them wire tied on temporarily. I'm gonna, this is how I'm going to run the wires, come in underneath, and then come into my pigtail. So on my pigtail, we need L. L is the brown wire, and we need S, which is the gray wire. So the brown with the white tracer goes to this black wire here, and then this one goes to the terminal, goes to the terminal, uh, the charging terminal. And then of course the red wire will go to that charging terminal also. I decided to use some of that corrugated wire routing stuff here. Um, brought it around, went under the coils there, and then here is the business end. So here is the uh, charge wire that'll go to the terminal on the back of the alternator. This is the S terminal off of the plug. That will go to that charge terminal also. The brown wire that is inside the corrugated stuff is the L wire, and then these two here, I'm just going to tuck those down in there just to get them out of the way. Here's the finished product. I'm pretty happy with it. Came out pretty nice. Uh, the only thing that's left to do as far as motor wire harness goes is my tack lead, which is here. Um, I, I need to hook that up to the tack module. I'm not sure where I'm going to mount the tack module yet. 
so I'm going to hold off on that and then uh, fix this the power lead for the computer. Other than that, came out really nice and clean. There's the finished alternator. Yeah, it came out really nice. I like it.